For some years now, Blender earned a reputation for itself as arguably one of the best open source software in the community. I mean 3D community, of course. Think about it. We have seen it establish itself as a superstar in the eyes of hobbyists, and one that can even start challenging the industry standard software in the professional world. However, I can see this revolution happening without the role of its iconic Cycles engine, a photorealistic render engine that has proven itself capable of giving any other render engine a run for its money. But what if I told you that Cycles wasn't even supposed to happen? It sounds surreal, doesn't it? But the reality is, Cycles wasn't even part of the plan. But why is that? And what is the mystery behind the story of the engine? Before we continue, if you are interested in learning more about how to learn 3D modeling and animation, I recommend you try Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for photography, video editing, and illustration classes, but it actually has many animation, game development, and VFX-focused stuff. For example, Unreal Engine 5 for Beginners by Jordi Vandeput is one of the best classes out there. It will help you get up and running with Unreal Engine 5 and all its exciting new features by learning how to build realistic landscapes and interior scenes as well as the fundamentals of visual production. You can also find many classes about Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, After Effects, and much more. But the great thing is, you can access thousands of classes every month for less than it will cost you to just get one out there. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. This might be surprising to hear, but Cycles was not always the render engine of Blender. In fact, once upon a time, this honor belonged to its predecessor, which was known as Blender Internal. The original render engine of the software, with a source code dating back to the 80s. So how did Cycles become a thing then? Well, within the team of the software engineers that were working on Blender Internal at the time, there was a man named Brag Van Lomar, who would later become the grandfather of Cycles. We'll get to that in a moment, but first, it all began when he started noticing the limitations of Blender Internal. And even though it was used in many Blender projects, like the open movies, it eventually started to seem to him the engine was a lost cause, which was destined for a downfall that was beyond prevention. In an interview in March 2012, Brecht van Lomer explained that Blender internal code lacked modularity. In simple terms, this is a situation where the fundamental code of the software is not easily editable, making it challenging to change or improve upon it along the way. Well, the idea of modularity is much more complex than that, but this is just to give you the gist of it instead of boring you with a computer science class. This was a situation that Blender internal wasn't a stranger to, because it was built on two rendering techniques, direct lighting and rasterization. Don't get me wrong though, they are good techniques, and they are still being used even today. But the thing is, they both are based on aging technology, and since it wasn't very popular, in a nutshell, there was nothing that they could do to make any serious improvements to it. So what was the solution then? With the rise of new render engines and the industry switching to a new era of GPU rendering, such as the release of Octane and Arnold, let's say Blender has some serious catching up to do. But the solution was far away from Blender internal as we have said. Because after Brad couldn't get the core of Blender internal to work well, in addition to upgrading it, he decided to take matters into his own hands and start coding in his free time to create the ideal render engine. And the rest is history. So just like how we discussed at the beginning of the video, it wasn't planned for Cycles to be part of Blender, and nothing more than just a passion project that Brack started himself. At the time, people back at the Blender Foundation had no idea about it. It was only after a year and a half of development where he tried to apply everything he learned from working with artists on the open movie projects to finally come up with a new render engine, which is Cycles, of course. After working on it in the shadows for that long, Brecht finally decided to show the brilliance of Cycles to Tom Rosendahl for the first time. If you don't know, Tom Rosendahl is the mastermind and the leader of the Blender Foundation. And the good news is, he was very interested in it. 
to the point where Bracht even started to work for the Blender Foundation again, with a focus on making Cycles Render Engine the new render engine of Blender. As you might have expected, this resulted in the debut of Cycles in Blender, making its first appearance in version 2.6 back in 2011. A mind-blowing milestone at the time, because it made GPU rendering possible for the first time in the software. And while the engine was much more limited back then, it still included the main pillars of the engine, and the ones that still come with it till this day, such as the shaded node system, a new workflow to make textures, and interactive rendering, and so on. In the open movies, Brecht recalls that they had some rather complicated rendering experience, and whenever they hit the render button, it took several minutes until they could actually see any pixels on the screen. And this is why he made Cycles an interactive ray tracer, which keeps updating you while you are changing the settings, so you can see the results as soon as possible. And this is great. This was before the release of Eevee, of course, and a feature that Blender really needed at the time. For something that was considered an accident, it is crazy to think about the amount of impact that the engine had on the software. And I would even argue that the software wouldn't be as popular as it is today if it wasn't for cycles. I mean, it gave artists the ability to create stunning images and animations for any type of project without having to pay a penny. This made it rise as a main 3D package in the scene. And if it wasn't because of it, they wouldn't be able to produce photorealistic final results of their projects, especially after the iconic 2.8 release, which took Blender to new heights. However, this is as far as it goes currently, and it is all linked to the initial philosophy. Just like how Brecht van Lohman said in an interview, individual artists and small studios are their target audience. It's not meant to be a render engine for Hollywood. It's meant to be something that is easy to use and produces renders quickly without too many technical parameters to tweak. I try to keep it as simple as possible. In other words, although Cycles had a huge impact on the software, it still didn't take the software to industry standard status. Don't get me wrong though, it is a great and solid choice. But just like how this artist said, I used to render with Arnold at my old job and I would say Cycles isn't as good, but it can do most of the same stuff. I found Cycles to be good for my freelance VFX jobs, but maybe if you're looking for scientifically accurate ray tracing with caustics for steel frames, another option might be better, but maybe the recent update will make it reach that status. So let's see. With more than a decade to its name, Cycles remains as relevant as ever. Matter of fact, in today's Blender landscape, it is still the main rendering engine of the software, with a lot of serious updates that it received in recent years, such as the release of Cycles X in Blender 3.0, a version with some rewritten parts, which made the software produce better performance and a much higher rendering speed, which is amazing in fact. And speaking of this release, Bracht said when it came out, We are keen to make bigger improvements to Core Cycles rendering. However, some decisions made in the past are holding back performance and making it difficult to maintain the code. To address that, Sergei Sharabin and I started a research project named Cycles X, with the aim to refresh the architecture and prepare it for the next 10 years. Rather than finding quick fixes or optimizations, that solve only part of the problem. We are rethinking the architecture as a whole. And this is a smart decision from what I can see, which can help them avoid the mistakes that happened in the past. I mean the era of Blender internal. And this is simply called learning from past mistakes. When it comes to the most recent update of Blender, Blender 4.0, Cycles was once again present with a bunch of rendering improvements. But the most impressive one is the introduction of light linking, as they call it, the missing link, because it is a feature that can finally take rendering in Blender to the next level by offering the ability to make light and emissive objects only affect the specific elements that you choose in your scene, which is great. So as you can see, the story still continues for the engine, 
despite the fact that it wasn't even part of the plan originally. Today, it stands as one of the most exciting aspects of Blender, especially if we keep in mind how expensive render engines are these days, which makes it a render engine that is worth looking into if you want to use it for some future projects, because apparently it has a great future. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, let's give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you guys very much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.